Do I sound like I'm joking? Do I sound like I'm playing? When you look into my eyes, you understand what I'm saying? Let me say it to you slowly, and it may sound scandalous. I don't think that you can handle this. All right. Once again, we are on. Is it once again? I don't know. It's week one. So it feels kind of like a new beginning, right? He is the great Mike Steph. I am the Mojo King, and this is Hidden Gems Football, brought to you by the Mighty 19 Media Group. Uh, how are you today, uh, former Mr. U? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. I'm not going to lie. I got a little, um, you know, butterflies in the stomach because we're embarking on a new season of NFL football. And um, this is something I usually tell my children, my grandchildren, what have you, about butterflies, when, especially when we're approaching the first day of school. Butterflies usually are like a prerequisite to have when you know something good is about to happen. When you don't have any butterflies, you kind of take things for granted. But when you're a little, you got that nervous energy, a lot of times magic happens. And that's how I feel about season number two of Hidden Gems Football. That's a good way of looking at it. I, I feel a little bit better about my butterflies already. See? <laughs> See? They don't call me the best in the world at what I do for nothing. Hey, yeah. man, look at you showing up <laughs> for, for, for week one. All right. For our listeners, uh, first of all, we appreciate you checking in with us, whether it's video or audio. Uh, we have uh, three sections to the episode. In section number two, we will preview the week's Thursday night game. We'll talk about keys to the game, injuries, see if we have a little insights, and make a prediction or two. In section number three, we will turn our attention to Sunday's games and in particular, Survivor Picks. For those that don't know what Survivor is, we'll explain it a little bit to you. But what we are looking for are sure things, can't miss, absolute locks of the week. Absolute locks. But before we get to those two sections, we have section one. And that is where our friend, Mike Steph, talks about his one big thing for the week. Let me talk to you. <laughs> My one big thing, actually, this week is um, talking about the upcoming season as a whole. To me, every season, every regular season is a season upon itself. Very seldom does the season, the previous season, roll into the new season. Last year, I remember all the scuttlebutt, all the hype coming into the season was about the competitive divisions in the, in the NFC West and the AFC West and how many teams were going to come out to come out that division to go into the postseason and so forth. Now this season, the power has shifted toward the AFC, not only just the AFC, but the AFC East in particular and the AFC North has a lot of, has a lot of competitive teams. So instead of just trying to narrow down my one big thing, it's just the fact that, I really feel that this year will be as unpredictable as ever. We don't know what to expect going into the year. We know we have our favorites. We have our hype teams. We have our common denominators, so to speak. But do we really know who's going to be standing with that Lombardi trophy the second week of February? I mean, we might have our hunches, but that's why they play the games on Sunday. And starting to kick off, in Arrowhead Stadium, we will begin that journey on trying to find out who will be that team standing, the last man standing, if you will, at the end of the season. So, yeah, I'm going to keep it short this week for my one big thing because we got 17 weeks. Matter of fact, we got 18 weeks of me talking and coming up with one, two, three, four, five, 18 big things. So this week, we're going to keep it nice and short. So, yeah, back to you, Mo. All right. Look at that. Look at that guy right there. All right. So section number two, we're going to talk about the Thursday night game. This week, it is the Detroit Lions going to Kansas City to face the Chiefs. The Chiefs are five-point favorites. The over-under is 52 and a half points. Uh, that means that Vegas is projecting Detroit to score 23 and three-quarter points, and Kansas City to score 28 and three-quarter points. Uh, there's been a big line switch since the beginning of the week. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. Uh, Detroit is uh, very healthy. Their only major injury is a 
Emmanuel Mosley is uh, questionable to play, but he is slotted to be a backup cornerback, so uh, not too big of a deal. On Kansas City's side, though, they have a couple of key injuries. Uh, Kadarius Toney, often injured, is questionable with a uh, knee injury. He's been limited in practice, so he's kind of a wait and see. And then there's Travis Kelsey, who injured his knee in practice and is questionable, but I would say almost 0% chance that he's going to play this week. The good news is that they've said he has no structural damage in his knee, but there's inflammation, and I'm sure that they're going to keep him out this week to protect him. Uh, also, a keynote, even though not an injury, there is still no Chris Jones as the star defensive lineman is still uh, trying to get a new contract. All right, uh, before I kick it to you about this game, I just want to point out about the line change that I mentioned. So originally, uh, Kansas City was six and a half point favorites. And the total was, uh, excuse me, the total was 49 and a half. The line has switched closer to Detroit by a point and a half. I would say that that's directly connected to Kelsey's injury. And meanwhile, the point total has gone up, which is kind of odd considering Kelsey's injury. But uh, pretty much the last couple of weeks has been ramped up that they expect this game to be a blowout. And that's the reason that the total has changed. All right. So. We're looking at five point uh, win for Kansas City and 52 and a half total points. Mike Steph, what do you think about this game? I would actually bet the Lions to cover um, because Kelsey being out, especially at the beginning of the season, I would feel that it would force Mahomes to even to, to, to distribute the ball even more so, and maybe even lean on the running game in the beginning of the year. Also, with Chris Jones being out, that, to me, would force KC to uh, try to play a little bit more ball control. I know this is going way against what people think about when it comes to Kansas City, but I think the combination of Kelsey being out and Chris Jones not being not being able to get pressure on Jared Goff. And everybody knows how prolific the Detroit Lions offense was last, last year. And like you said, this year, they're coming in. They're fully healthy. They're fully raring to go. They have the kickoff game of the season. When's the last time Detroit has actually led off the season in a primetime game? They haven't. So do you? This is this, I'm going to actually contradict myself. And saying that I believe Detroit is going to ride the momentum from last year's season finale when they went into Green Bay on prime time and defeated Green Bay at home. And this year they're going to go into Arrowhead Stadium. I'm not I'm not picking them to win, but it's going to be a nip and tuck game. I could see them maybe losing losing by a field goal, maybe losing by two points, if that, because I just think that Andy Reid is worth is worth it's just Having Andy Reid on, on the sideline, I believe, is just worth a win over Dan Campbell. Campbell is, you know, Mr. Bite, bite the kneecaps, and Andy Reid is Mr. Bite the Burger. So, you know, on either way, I believe Detroit's going to keep it close. Kansas City's going to win. And it, and if we want to go over or under with the 52 and a half, I would lean under. I would lean under. Um, just for the fact that, I, like I said, I believe Kansas City is going to play a little bit more ball control than everybody believes that they're going to have. And, and usually when it's so hyped that these that these games are going to be in the 30s and the 40s or what have you, a lot of times they end up disappointing. So, um, yeah, I'll go under 52 and a half and the Lions to uh, to be closer than five. All right. Um, yeah, I, I like where you're going with that. Uh, I forgot to mention that uh, Jamison Williams is suspended due to uh, gambling issues. Uh, when we previewed these teams, we said that Kansas City is basically going to stay steady and they're just going as they're going. And there are three components that they that keeps them their momentum going. Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes, and Travis Kelsey. Um, him being out is is a setback for them. Obviously, with Mahomes, you feel that they will keep chugging anyway. But it does impact their offense. And like you said, I think they may rely a little bit more on the running game. 
it'll be interesting to see what um what the second receiver and third receiver, so Sky Moore, Richie James, maybe he makes an impact in this game. And then we don't know about if uh, Tony's going to play or not yet either. So what happened? Kind of sentimental to me. Um, my late brother, Cool couldn't stand couldn't stand Ricky Richie James when he was on the Giants. <laughs> couldn't stand him. <laughs> so that's why I just I swear I, I had to get that slander in because this would be a Giants free slander year. But yeah, Richie James, I'm so glad he's all big blue. Let him be their problem. So they got two problematic giant receivers. You got Kadarius Tony and you got Richie James with his red dreads. Yeah, they definitely going which going to concentrate on the running game. This is unbelievable. This is unbelievable because I knew you weren't going to slander the Giants this year. So I saw Richie James there and I was like, oh, that's good. You know, Mike Steph will leave him alone. Nope, nope, nope. Guess not. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, no. I will find. I will find you out. <laughs> all, all the Giant players that order the Giant team, guess what? You are not safe. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. So um, on Detroit side, we get to see the uh, the premiere of Jameer Gibbs. I'm really interested to see what that running back could do. You know, if you remember, Detroit drafted him early, shocking pretty much the whole NFL. Uh, they also have Sam LaPorta as their starting tight end, who was their second round draft pick. In a bubble, uh, Kansas City mostly stayed steady, but now are not going to have their star for the week. Meanwhile, Detroit has improved at least in paper, from what they were last year. I have to go with Detroit if I'm going to go at all on the five points. I think I think you have to go, me personally, I would have to go on the Detroit side. But you know what? I'm not betting it just because Patrick Mahomes just drives me crazy. <laughs> he always seems to find a way. Uh, back to what you were saying, I actually think what's going to end up happening is Detroit's going to have a lead by one late in the game. Does Kansas City kick a field goal or does Patrick Mahomes throw a touchdown? I think the kick. Well, you know, the kick the kick works for the, the spread. The touchdown definitely does not. So that that is my uh, problem there. But I the one thing that I think I feel a little bit stronger on is again agreeing with you is that over on is that total score of 52 and a half. I want to go under it. I think the narrative that's hit the public that this will automatically be a high scoring game it doesn't seem to ring true to me especially with kelsey out so i'm going the one bet if i do make a bet in this game will be that over under i will go under the 52 and a half points all right let's move to section number three we're going to talk some survivor are you ready to step up your style without compromising the planet introducing the exciting partnership between blueview footwear and the 19 media group network just visit bit.ly backslash BlueView19 to start your sustainable style journey. Our friends over at BlueView Footwear are renowned for introducing the world's first fully biodegradable sneaker. By using plant-based plastics, they are leading a revolution in cleaner materials and manufacturing. They have sleek and contemporary styles that cater to a wide range of tastes. BlueView Footwear believes that fashion and sustainability can coexist harmoniously. Explore their incredible collection of eco-friendly footwear by visiting bit.ly backslash BlueView19. If you let us know you made a purchase, we'll shout you out on our next show. Again, just visit bit.ly backslash BlueView19 today and you'll see the ultimate collaboration of fashion, sustainability, and media excellence. All right, so we're going to talk Survivor picks here. The key thing to know about Survivor is that you can only pick a team once. So the team has to win, and then you can never pick them again for the rest of the season. It gets a little interesting, especially towards the end of the season, when you have a bunch of teams that you don't really like that much, but you have to put your faith in one of them. DraftKings has, I believe, a million-dollar grand prize if you end up making it through the season. Assuming you don't tire people, because then you'd split the prize. They also have smaller prizes with uh, smaller buy-ins. So... If you are interested in Survivor at all, uh, check it out before Sunday and you could get yourself in and have a chance at, you know, whatever, 30, 40,000, maybe a million. Listen, I need that bread. I'm with you. <laughs> I'm with you. And that's the reason I'm in. All right. Now, uh, as you alluded to in section number one, the NFL is not very predictable 
particularly in the beginning of the season. Even Vegas doesn't know it all yet. As the season goes along, those spreads are more exact. When they say somebody's going to win, it's more likely they're going to win. But right now, it's kind of... So if you are a listener and you have a particular insight that you believe in, these are the weeks to actually bet on them. The first couple of weeks, believe in yourself. Don't believe in Vegas. With that said, Survivor, I am always going with the bigger spreads. We'll talk about one of them first. Is the Houston Texans going to Baltimore to face the Ravens? Uh, Baltimore is a 10-point favorite at home. The total is 43 and a half points. Uh, as far as injuries, Houston has a significant one on defense as Jimmy Ward is questionable with a groin injury. I think they are hoping he'll play, but they are not sure. On Baltimore side, we have a huge one. Mark Andrews has been out with an undisclosed injury and has a practice in two weeks. Um, the coach has said that he's not panicking. He still expects them to play game one, but I don't know what undisclosed injury is. So who knows? All right, uh, Mike, Steph, what do you think about this game? Would you have faith in Baltimore to actually win this as they are big favorites? Uh, no, I think Baltimore is pretty much a lot to win. Um, as for the spread, I would be more concerned if Texas weren't starting a rookie quarterback, C.J. Stroud. If they went with the incumbent Davis Mills, I know he's not spectacular, but I really feel that at least he would be able to take care of the ball, um, control the offense a little bit better. Uh, there's too much of a variable. I mean, it's too, yeah, it's, it's too much of a variable when it di- when you're dealing with a rookie quarterback, especially in the first game of the season, especially against a ferocious, well, a wannabe ferocious defense in Baltimore. And on the other side, on the flip side, when it comes to Baltimore, do you not think that Lamar Jackson is going to try to show up with his new weapons? He got Zay, Zay Flowers. He got OBJ. You don't think they're going to try to open it up with new offensive coordinator Todd Munkin? They're going to try to make a statement here. And it's at home. I would go with the Ravens plus 10, well, minus 10 to cover the spread. Um, D'Amico Ryans gives me a little pause on making that decision because he is a defensive genius. He showed improved in his time in uh, San Francisco. Uh, he was also an outstanding uh, defensive player when he was with the same Houston Texans. He might have a little wrinkle in there just to slow down the offense. And but with Mark, Mark Andrews being out because he's Mr. Steady, he's Mr. Consistent, and with him being out, he's not guaranteed to be out. He's questionable, so he, okay. he might play. Well, I, or, well, I should say with him being potentially hobbled. Could I? Because we don't know if he's going to be a hundred percent after missing two weeks. You know, so with him being another variable, of, you don't know exactly what you're going to get. That would, like I said, that would lead me to uh, to think that they're going to really air it out, and I think they're going to try to make a statement on week one. So, yeah, I would go with the Ravens um, covering the spread. 43 and a half. Yeah, I, I think I would go under. Because I I, I, I just don't see the Texas, Texans being able to garner enough points to keep that spread up. Because, listen, uh, what, 43 and a half? So what? So... The Ravens could be beating them thirty to ten, you know, and still go and still and still be under, you know. I just I just don't see the offensive firepower in the Texans side. So yeah, I'll go under with the with the over under. All right, uh, showing my rust, I forgot to mention that uh, at forty three and a half, Houston is projected to score sixteen and three quarters, and Baltimore is uh, projected to score twenty six and three quarters. That's how you get to the forty three and a half. Yeah, I don't even think they're getting 16. So um, I think the interesting thing here is that uh, on Houston's side, yeah, you have the rookie quarterback. To tell you the truth, I'm not exactly concerned about him as much as their receiving crew. Their number one receiver is Robert Woods. Robert Woods, who used to be phenomenal with the Rams, has had a rough season or two as of late. 
I don't know. Is he going to fit as a number one? And then there, uh, number two is Nico Brown, who is okay. They do have Dalton Schultz as tight end, so there you go. You got that. The one thing that they should have going for them is their ground attack. Uh, Damian Pierce was a monster last year, and then Devin Singletary is now their uh, backup slash uh, co number one. So I don't know. Like I think you're right. They're probably not going to score much. Um, on Baltimore side, though, Lamar Jackson hasn't played this preseason. I'm gonna kick it back to you in a second uh, to find out if you find that concerning because I'm just I was just baffled like I didn't know that. But um, okay. The other thing is that they're re-ramping their offense to be more passing friendly as opposed to their typical ground and pound. That should introduce much more scoring. It should stop the clock a little bit more. If they're three and out, it's gonna be quick. The other team's gonna be back on the field real quick with their offense. So that would lead me to believe that they will be scoring more. Uh, as the season goes along, but maybe not this game. This is my prediction here, and I'm making a very specific one for not knowing exactly what's going to happen in game one. But what I think is going to happen is I think the game's going to be close through the first half, maybe not too much scoring, and then I think Baltimore is going to open up in the second half. So I will I will definitely think Baltimore is going to win. I think they will win by more than 10 because they will do pick up points late. They'll pile on late. I would want to go over an F43 and a half, but what I think I would do is actually wait and see what happens in the first half. And especially if it's low scoring, then I might go over on the second half because I just think that Baltimore will may start off slow, but it'll open it up later. All right, so back to you, Mike. Uh, what do you think about Lamar Jackson not playing in the preseason? Um, I think it was actually a – it could be up for debate, but I think it was a smart move. Um, because he's still coming off his injury from last year. Um, you don't want to show too much of what you're going to unveil in the regular season. So you, it's still an unknown of how he's going to sync with his new with his new weapons, at least to the public eye. But I'm quite sure they I know game action and practice is two different things, but I I give the benefit of the doubt to John Harbaugh on having a post of his team of knowing exactly what his team is capable of and what his team is, you know, what, it, what the abilities are. At least, you know, starting game one, Lamar Jackson should be 110% healthy. Um, one thing I will add, which is going to be kind of funny, um, since you have all these speedsters on the outside, since you have like pretty much you have uh, Bateman and, and 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 Flowers and OBJ, and you're going to have a lot of deep patterns. At least that's what you would think. Do you not realize that that might actually allow Lamar Jackson to be even more dangerous because now you're pushing everybody down the field, and he has all these lanes that he could take advantage of with the legs without having to really be the running back. He can actually be the scrambler and get 15 yards a chunk and hopefully go out of bounds. I mean, that's, that's, but that's going to be something to be, to be watched, in the, you know, uh, especially early in the season. Yeah. He's still super dangerous uh, running the ball. So you're right. If it opens up a lane, it's going to be tough on some defenses. All right. Um, I, I'm going to stick to one other game that I'm looking at as far as Survivor, and that is the Arizona Cardinals going to Washington to face the Commanders. The Commanders are seven-point favorites. The total is 38 and a half. Uh, that means Vegas is projecting the Cardinals to score 15 and three-quarter points and Washington to score 22 and three-quarters. Uh, as far as injuries, the big injury for Arizona is Kyler Murray is out. Uh, he's on the pup list, so he'll be out at least the first four weeks recovering from his knee surgery. And Zach Urch is also recovering from knee surgery. Uh, he's questionable for game one, but sounded to me like he's leaning towards not playing. Maybe it was that turf in Arizona. Maybe it was. <laughs> Maybe it was. Um, on Washington's side, uh, they have two uh, pretty significant injuries on the offensive side. 
Terry McLaurin, Terry McLaurin is day to day with a toe injury. I think I just saw recently that they expect him to be able to play, but they're still not 100% sure. And then uh, Logan Thomas, uh, tight end, very talented, but often injured, is is also day to day with a calf injury. Uh, what do you think about this game? I swear, I, I tried to hide my, 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 my Chester Cat grin when you spoke about the Arizona Cardinals because you know the Arizona Cardinals are slated to maybe win three games this year. They have a nondescript team. They're really going for the tank, not even the unofficial tank, not even the undercover tank. No, they're going for the tank. Don't have any confidence in their head coach. I think the head coach is way above his skis, so to speak. Um, and this is a perfect game for Washington to, you know, get their, uh, get their bearings. It's almost like a homecoming game in college speak where you bring in the Patsy in just so you can really beat them up and get your confidence going for the real rest of the season. Arizona, shoot, I don't even know who their starting quarterback is. All I know is they actually released Colt McCoy. Colt McCoy is a very confident quarterback. He's a he's he's what you call a professional quarterback, professional backup. But he would have been somebody to kind of steer the ship until Kyler Murray got off the pup list and was able to come. But then to get rid of him and put whoever behind center kind of reinforced the fact that they're not looking to win anything. With all that being said, yeah, Commanders, shoot, that seven is actually too low. Now that thirty-eight and a half. I mean that thirty-eight. I would go under because once again i just don't have a faith in the opposing team keeping up the end of the bargain so under all right uh the reason you don't know who the quarterback is because nobody knows so they they traded for joshua dobbs right at the end of the preseason and they have rookie clayton toon but they haven't announced who is starting week one they seem to be labeling this idea as an advantage, a competitive advantage to not uh, tell the Washington team who is starting. But does your team know? Does, does Hollywood Brown know who's throwing him the ball? No, he's going to drop it anyway. (laughs) I am a little worried because this is going to be Sam Howell's, uh, well, he did play a little bit last year, but this is going to be his opening day for this season as the number one quarterback. Um, that does make me a little bit nervous. The unpredictability of how when the season starts makes me nervous. This is a good time to try to get Washington uh, through in Survivor because I don't know how often you're going to want to pick Washington. So... I'm going to have multiple survivor teams because you know, I, I just need to have a more than one shot. Um, Washington is definitely going to be one of the teams that I pick for survivor. As far as the spread, Washington should be way better. So I guess the seven points looks pretty safe, but I don't know how the scoring is going to go. I don't know the, what's going to happen as far as the total. Arizona might shock us and throw up a couple of touchdowns and then, you know, whatever, but. I mean, if I had to guess, I'd go under, but I'm not guessing at that. I'm not, there's no way in the world I'm betting this game at all. But as far as Survivor, I'm going Washington. I think you're just being nice because one of our colleagues is a Arizona Cardinals fan and actually lives near Glendale, Arizona. You know, look, I love McTyler as well as you do, but guess <laughs> what? This is Hidden Gems football. No, slander, slander is equal. <laughs> all right, you get him. I, I, I still, I, still have never been featured on a gimmick infringement. So I'm trying to get, you know, I'm trying to get in the good graces. So, you know, they'd actually uh, let me on. Yeah, I'm a two-timer. <laughs> Shoot, hey. listen, I... <laughs> maybe, maybe they like a, the abuse. So, all right. Arizona sucks. <laughs> they suck. They're the worst. They're not going to score all season. There you go. <laughs> all right. Feature next on Gimmick Infringement. (laughs) The Mojo King. (laughs) All right. The next biggest spread, I I don't even want to talk about this game, is uh, Tampa Bay going to Minnesota. Minnesota are six-point favorites. Talking about slander. You had a lot of slander for Minnesota in the preview. Uh, By the way, guys, go check out the previews. They're really good. The AFC East one is special, though. That one's special. Check them all out. Yes. Because they're they're gems everywhere. Uh, Hidden gems, right? All right. Uh, 
we're we're about towards the end of the show. Is there any games that catch your eye in particular? Um, two in particular. My first game would be the Cowboys visiting the Giants on Sunday Night Football. The Cowboys are favored by three points. This is going to be a very very interesting season for the Giants. Um, but the reason I bring this game up is. I'm going to let the masses know exactly where I stand for the rest of the season. I will be picking the Giants each and every year. I mean, each and every game of the season. More of a tribute um, to my brother because he was the, like the biggest Giants fan I know. And also because I think the Giants are going to be better than most people expect. But we'll get into that later on in the season. And if you're going to catch the Cowboys, it's best to catch them at the beginning of the season when they're still – you know, kind of, kind of, kind of shaking. You know, Dak, Dak Prescott's uh, confidence has to be shaken by the acquisition of Trey Lance. Yeah, I know, I know he's shaking in the boots. Okay, I say that in jest, but yeah, um, that's one game. So I'll, I'll pick the Giants, um, outright money line. Um, I think the over under I have is forty six and a half. I will go under because I just don't see them like what's going lighten the scoreboard up. And my second game, of course, what what kind of hidden gems football episode would this be if I didn't talk about my JET at Jets? Jets. Um, they host on September 11th the Buffalo Bills, and there's a lot of hype going around this game. There's a lot of hype going around my Jets for once for the first time in who who knows how long. We haven't been in the postseason in 12 years, and unfortunately, one of our cornerbacks stuck their foot in their mouth yesterday and proclaimed us. We're proclaimed that we have a chance, the Jets have a chance, the Jets defense has a chance to be better than the 85 Bears. Why would you say that on the eve of a game, an in, interdivision game, a game that's a standalone game on Monday Night Football where the majority of the league hates us already? For what reason? I don't know, but they hate us already, but either here or there. Um, the line that I have is Bills um, minus two and a half. No, no. Jets outright to win. Money line over under also 46 and a half. And I'm going under because I could see this game being 24 mm, 21 Jets with a fourth quarter touchdown thrown by. Aaron Rodgers to his new number one receiver, Garrett Wilson, who would be top five, top five, top five, top five this season. So, yeah, those are my two games that um that I'm looking forward to. And uh yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting that it's gonna be an interesting weekend in Gotham. Yeah, I'd say. Uh you know what? I'm not even gonna say anything. I'm not gonna throw any uh shade your way towards your New York teams, particularly the Jets, because I think I did enough in a preview. So yeah, check it I'll, out. I'll, I'll, I'll leave you alone this week. <laughs> yeah, but if you want to hear some jet slander, <laughs> or some jet yeah, slander. he's your guy. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, I slander Arizona and the Jets. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, next time, shoot, let's see. Next time, he's going to get a get an invite on the salty thoughts of Mike Steph. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, it's good to shake off the rust here. Time to sign off. Like Steph, take us out. Unlike Mo said, you know, shook, shook off the rust, you know, and now we're gonna go full, full, full throttle into the regular season. And each year, well, each week, we'll build upon the next week until we reach the ultimate, the climax, if you will. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hidden against football. It's been a part of the ah! <laughs> nineteen video group. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. Mike Steph's having earthquakes. This is a 19 Media Group presentation. I want to say Mr. Uso bad. See, that's why we gotta get rid of this damn banner. I, I figure I figure I get on my I get on my sports cast to look today. <laughs> oh, I like that. I like that. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> grand opening, grand closing. Hey, little big man. He don't care. He has his headphones on.
it would be funny if he rises up and you see see him come over yet come over your shoulder like hey dad hi <laughs> hey <laughs> how you doing 